Hello, and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 3.2. We're going to look at adding and subtracting with decimals. Now, when we add or subtract decimals, it's very similar to what we did with adding or subtracting integers. The only difference is we need to line up our decimals. So the examples I'm going to show you, we're going to do them horizontally. But we're still going to assess when it comes to adding or subtracting, just as we did with integers. So the first example, we have 2.5, or 2 and 5 tenths, plus 4.1, or 4 and 1 tenth. So I'm going to write them vertically instead of horizontally. But I line up my decimal, and now I'm ready to do the operation of addition. 5 and 1 is 6, nothing to carry. Make sure we follow our decimal down. 4 and 2 is 6. So we get 6 and 6 tenths, or 6.6. .6. Very simple. We just line up our decimals. Now in the next example, we'll see something a little bit different. Because when we add and they have different decimal places, sometimes we've got to put in a 0 just as a placeholder. So I'm going to line up my decimals, 32.4, 1.58. 0.0934. Now, since they're all addition, I'm going to do it all at once in a vertical manner. But because we lined up our decimal, our decimal point's going to be right here, we need some place value holders. So this, to hold the place of this, these two, because we're in the, or the thousands, and these because we're in the 10,000s. So now, just like normal addition, we're going to work from this end to this end, starting with the smallest value place. 0, 0, and 4 is 4. 0, 0, and 3 is 3. 0, 8, and 9 is 17. So I put the 7 and I carry the 1, just as I did in normal addition with integers. 4 and 5 is 9, plus the 1. Or the one I carried is 10. So I put a 0 and carry the 1. And then we have 2 and 1 is 3, plus the one I carried is 4. And 0 is just 4, nothing to carry. And 3 and nothing is 3. So now if we look at the number, we have 34.0734, or 34 and 734 ten thousandths. All right, the next one we have here, now notice we have some negative values in here. Just like we did with integers, we're going to assess. I see that my numbers have the same sign, and I'm asked to add them. So same sign, we're just going to combine. So I'm going to write them vertically, lining up that decimal place. And because they're the same sign, I can just combine them and keep that sign. So I already assessed my value. I know it's going to be negative. Now I just have to combine them. 8 and 2 is 10, so I carry the 1. 8 and 1 is 9, and 0 is still 9. And 1 and 1 is 2. So we have negative 29 and no 100s. Or we could just say it's negative 29. Now this example is subtraction. Or we could think of it as combining uh, different signs. Different signs, we're going to find their difference. So if I write it vertically, I notice that this one doesn't have a decimal point, but I can put one in there. Just like this number was negative 29 and 0 uh, tenths, I can say that this is 28 and 0 whatever place values I need. So when I bring this one down, 3.3 3 or 3 and 3 tenths, different signs, I'm going to find their difference. And if I assess the sign before I begin, the larger value always determines the sign in addition and subtraction. And I say, well, the 28 is positive, and that's the larger value. So I already know my answer is going to be positive. So I assess the sign. I'm not going to make that sign error. But we do need a 0 here as a placeholder. That's why we introduced that decimal. So now I can find the difference. Well, just like in normal subtraction, sometimes we have to borrow when we're subtracting. So I can't take 3 from 0, so I have to borrow, make that a 7. And this is now 10 in the tenths place. 10 tenths is 1. 10 minus 3 is 7. 
This decimal comes along for the ride. We lined them up. It's going to stay there. And now I can find the difference. 7 minus 3 is 4. 2 minus nothing is 2. So we find this to be a positive 24.7. We recognize that they had different signs. We find their difference. The larger value determines that, 24.7. All right, let's look at this, and let's do that assessment. In numbers like this, sometimes it's very important. We see we have 40.3 minus 700. Well, if I assess the sign first, I say, well, 700 is much more than 40.3, and it's negative. Because they have different signs and I'm going to find their difference, the larger value determines the sign. So by doing that, I already know my answer will be negative, less chance of making a sign error. Now, because they have different signs, I put the larger value on top and the smaller value on the bottom. And we line up their place values, the tens, the ones, the tenths. And I put in that placeholder. Now, again, they had different signs, so I have to find their difference. But I've already assessed the answer is going to be negative because the larger value is negative. Now, when we find that difference, I will have the final answer and the correct sign. So now to subtract, oh, I've got to do lots of borrowing because there's nothing in any of these place values. But I have to subtract something in the tenths. So I'm going to go all the way to here and borrow a 6 and make this 10. Borrow from this, borrow from this, until I get to the place I need it. 10 minus 3 is 7 because we're finding the difference of two numbers. So we're subtracting. 9 minus 0. Let me bring down that decimal, is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. And 6 minus nothing is 6. So we find the value to be negative 659 and 7 tenths, or negative 659.7. Now, just to kind of check if we're right, if I combine these two again, I'll get back to that negative 700 I started with, same sign combined. So if we look at this. We, just, we can estimate as well and say, well, if I had 700 and I took away about 50, if we estimate, well, this is pretty close to 650, right? So estimate as, as well as uh, you progress through this. If we look at this last example of adding or subtracting uh, given values, this one I'm going to assess the sign. They have the same sign, so I'm merely going to combine them. This is very similar to uh, the third example we just saw. Same sign, combine and keep that sign. So 36.2 and 10.02. Notice I just line up the decimals. I put in my place value. And I'm going to combine them because they're both negative. Well, the sign isn't going to change because they're both negative. I'm just going to get something that's even more negative. So we combine them. 0 and 2 is 2. 2 and 0 is 2. Bring that decimal along. 6 and 0 is 6. And 3 and 1 is 4. So if I combine a negative 36 with a negative 10, my estimate should be negative 46. And if I look at my answer, we're right in that ballpark, right? Negative 46 and 22 one hundredths. Now, what if we're asked to evaluate using decimals? Well, we're going to do this the same way we did any other evaluation. We're going to plug and chug. So I'm going to rewrite this with parentheses. I have an x value plus a y value. So in place of my x, I look and say, well, I need to put in 2.4. In place of my y, I'm going to put 0.12. And now I can add them, just as we did in the previous examples. And I'll do it right here, 2.4 and 0.12. We line up that decimal. And now we can add them when we put in our placeholders. 0 and 2 is 2, 4 and 1 is 5. Bring our decimal along. 2 and 0 is 2. Since they were both positive values and I'm combining them, I have a more positive value, 2.52, or 2 and 52 one hundredths. If it's subtraction, we're going to set it up the same way. I have an x value minus a y value. So my x value is 2.4. And my y value is 0 0.12, or 0 and 12 one hundredths. And now I can see, well, let's assess the sign. Different signs, I'm going to find a difference. The larger value is going to determine the sign. 
Well, in the previous video, we looked at decimals and which one was greater than or less than. 2.4 is greater than 0.12. So we know that this is positive. This is going to determine the sign. My sign is positive. So we can just align them and find their difference. Put in my placeholder. And now, because it's subtraction, I do have to borrow. 10 minus 2 is 8. 3 minus 1 is 2. Bring down that decimal. 2 minus 0 is 2. And we have 2 and 28 one hundredths. All right, sometimes we'll be asked to determine if we can determine if a value, a given value, is a solution to an equation. So here we have x plus 5.9 equals 8.6. Well, what we can do here is just plug and chug. It's very similar to evaluating. It's just asking us to do it a different way. So I'm going to substitute in 3.7 for the x value plus 5.9 and determine if this is a true statement. Well, if I add these two together, 3.7 and 5.9, and since they're the same sign, I'm just going to combine. 7 and 9 is 16. Carry the 1, and I brought my decimal down. 5 and 3 is 8, and 1 is 9. Uh-oh, 9.6. This is equal to 8.6. So we can see right now that's not a true statement. Maybe someone thought this was the solution because they forgot to carry that 1. If I didn't remember that 1, I would have got 8.6. So I check my work, and I say, OK, this is close to 6. This is close to 4. I better get something close to 10. 9.6 is closer to 10 than 8.6. All right. Sometimes we'll be asked to simplify expressions. Realize there's no equal sign, making it an expression. And we've simplified expressions before by simply combining like terms. If we look at this here, that's what we have to do. Combine like terms. The only difference is now we have decimals. So what I like to do when it comes to combining like terms is to identify my like terms. So I'm going to put a square over this term because it contains a z. And I see this one contains a z as well. But I'm going to be very careful because that negative sign belongs to that number. But they're both z, so I'm going to put a box around each one. The other two values, well, those are just decimal numbers, 11.9 and negative 15.2. So I'm going to underline them to denote that they are like terms. And now I'm going to combine my like terms. I'll start with the ones containing the variable. I have 14.2 and negative 9.6. Well, they have different signs, so I'm going to find their difference. Now, when subtracting these, keep in mind, you're not subtracting the z. This is like a unit. Just, we, just like we had seen in previous uh, applications, the units don't just go away unless they cancel. Well, subtraction isn't going to make a unit cancel. So I know that it is the z's that I am subtracting. So <clears throat> here I have to borrow. 12 minus 6 is 6. Bring that decimal down. 3, I can't subtract 9 from 3, but I can from 13. So 13 minus 9 is 4. The larger value was positive, so the answer is positive. I have a positive 4.6z. Let's look at these numbers. We have 11.9 and negative 15.2. These have different signs, so I'm going to find their difference. Well, I write the larger value first and the smaller value underneath. And I know that I'm going to be finding a difference. But before I find that difference, let's assess the sign. What's larger, 15.2 or 11.9? Because when they have different signs, we know the larger value is going to determine the sign. This is larger than that. The larger value is negative. So I know my answer is going to be negative. So we've made that assessment. We're not going to make that sign error. Now we can find their difference. Again, I have to borrow here. 12 minus 9 is 3. Bring down my de decimal. 4 minus 1 is 3. And 1 minus 1 is 0. So if we look and combine the two terms, we have 4.6z minus 3.3. And that is the simplified version of this. So <clears throat> let's look at one more. 
This is one that we should be somewhat familiar with. It's something we may deal with on a daily basis. So I'm going to allow you to try this one on your own. Don't be afraid of an application problem. It's only uh, as intimidating as you make it. So we, I'll read it for you. It says, Britt bought a car part for $18.26. If she paid with two $10 bills, what was her change? So we work with money and change all the time. We should be familiar with that. Go ahead and try it yourself. Thank you for watching.